Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Nerdy Movie News Roundup, the show where we round up all, and I do mean all, of the latest news in this past week of nerdy movies. Uh, we got quite a bit of stories to get through today, so we are just going to get right into it. Completely forgot to set this up <laughs> properly, but it's okay, because here we are, <laughs> we're all good, don't even worry. Uh, so first up, we have uh, another teaser trailer for Gen V. Uh, this is a spin-off uh, series of The Boys. And basically, it looks like it's going to take place in a university full of soups. And we're going to be following like college students. And it looks as edgy and as irreverent as The Boys. Um, it's very gory and violent. Um, and I think it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty fun. Um there was a, like another teaser trailer that released a few months ago that kind it was kind of teasing a murder mystery kind of thing where our main character was getting framed for some kind of murder or something um it doesn't look like they're quite there it, it doesn't look like they're elaborating on that more in this trailer so we'll see if that ends up being like what the main thrust of the show is but it definitely seems like there's shady stuff going on at the university anyways that they're going to be uncovering. So, yeah, I'm I'm all in on this. I'm currently at the point where anything related to the boys, I will check out. Um, although, I am a little worried about the boys getting oversaturated because we have the main show. We have the boys Diabolical, which was that animated anthology thing. And now we have this. So, uh, th this looks good, but hopefully it doesn't overstay its welcome or whatever. All right, next up, we have a final trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Uh, oops. So this this actually comes out uh, really soon. Like, for me, it comes out on Tuesday because it's getting a Wednesday release. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's nationwide and not just at, like, my movie theater or my, my area. Um, I, I think this looks awesome. I love the art style. I love the voice acting, the fact that they actually got uh, teenagers to voice the turtles this time. Um, the action looks really sick. You know, just their dynamic with one another looks super adorable. Like, I'm, I've never really been a huge Ninja Turtles fan, but this, I'm all in on this. Um, so yeah, I will be checking this out. Look out for my review on Tuesday, sometime in the evening. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, so for our first official news story, we have some more information on Invincible. Um, Invincible put out this tweet here where they talk about the Adam Eve special episode that premiered on Amazon Prime. Uh, so it's out right now. It's a special Adam Eve origin story. Um, we talked about it last week. I think it's really good. And then they... Okay, so then they specify that the first four episodes of season two will air from November 3rd through November 24th. Then it says, there will be a short break for you to take a breath, hug your family, and reflect on what you ex just experienced in episode 204. So there's going to be a break. And then the next four episodes will arrive in early 2024. Um, I think that that's kind of lame, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't know. I'd almost rather they wait to start the season and then start it once year like just start it in 2024 when you can just air the season uninterrupted I, I guess that's just me assuming that they're doing the break because they have to like finish the season i'm assuming that's why and maybe it maybe it is just them trying to extend the longevity of the series if so fair i guess but it kind of annoys me i'd rather just watch the the series eight weeks straight that's much more satisfying for me i'm not into the whole like put out half the season then there's a break and then come back for the other half of the season um i don't know but that, that's just me uh and then it also says well this is good news it says here that season three voice recording is complete and will help ensure that there won't be as long a gap in, in, uh, again so that's good news. Apparently, season three voice recording has already been recorded, so there's not going to be as long of a gap because season one came out in like 2021, so we've been waiting for like 
over two years, <laughs> I want to say, for season two, uh, which is absurd. Um, but at least that that won't happen again. Um, and then we have some voice voice casting announcements like Sterling K. Brown is going to be Angstrom Levy, Peter Cullen is Thaddeus, and Raya Seahorn, Tatiana Maslany, and Josh Keaton are joining season two as well. And then they say that somehow Donald has returned. And I think, yeah, so if you look at the poster here, <laughs> Donald is just there. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but he's there above uh, the um, Rex right here in the in the image. So that's interesting because, yeah, he was cut in half by Omni-Man, if I remember correctly, <laughs> in season one. So we'll see what happens with that. All right. Um. All right, so we have some updates on Daredevil Born Again. So this is coming from Daniel RPK. This guy is a scooper. Um, so this isn't coming from Variety or the Hollywood Reporter. So it should be taken with a grain of salt, right? It's not coming from one of the major trades. Uh, but this guy is one of the notable scooper guys on the internet. So we'll we'll go over it. Daredevil Born Again will reportedly have two parts consisting of nine episodes each, similar to Andor. So that is that, that tracks because we know that the season is going to be 18 episodes, which is so crazy. Just uh, like a nine episode season would be crazy considering most Disney Plus shows have been six episodes. 18 episodes? That's so wild. Um, okay. But I, I mean,. Uh, that's exciting <laughs> um, that they're going to have it's going to be separated into two arcs. So like nine episodes for each arc seems good. You know, it seems like more than six episodes, which have led uh, Dis Disney Plus shows to not feeling as fleshed out as they should. And then an 18 episode storyline might be a bit too much. So if there are two arcs being divided up into nine episodes, that sounds good to me. Um, then it says that the arcs will be very dark and mature in tone, similar to the Netflix version and seemingly aiming towards TVMA rating. So when it comes to this part, I've seen a lot of people come out and be like, oh, the, the cap, I call it cap, Disney will never write an R rated, make an R rated show. Um, but if you really th sit down and look at what's going on right now, Disney is making Deadpool 3. And Deadpool 3 is going to be rated R. They are currently making Marvel Zombies. That is an R-rated show. On Disney Plus, right now, you can watch a TVMA N N Daredevil Netflix show. All three seasons are on Disney Plus. It really wouldn't make a ton of sense for Disney to go... Oh, we, we, we can't possibly make a TVMA Daredevil show because if Little Timmy comes across an R-rated Daredevil show, oh, that's going to be the end of the world. Anyways, over here we have three seasons of a TVMA Daredevil Netflix show that you can check out. That just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, listen, I, I'm not saying that it will be TVMA. Like, I'm not going to, like, stand my ground and say that that's going to happen for sure. But people saying that it's, like, an impossibility or that... It would be wild for Disney, of all companies, to do that. I don't think they're pay paying attention to what's currently happening. I think it's totally possible, but we will see. All right, next up, we have some more Daredevil information. This is coming from Can We Get Toast. So, again, it's not coming from one of the major trades. It's coming from one of these internet scooper guys. Uh, but we'll go over it anyways. But take take it with, with a grain of salt. Matt Murdock and Kristen McDuffie will be working together at a new firm, Murdock and Associates, in Daredevil Born Again, as Nelson and Murdock is done. So, this is really just more evidence that uh, Karen and Foggy will not be in the show. Um, we've already seen the actress for Karen, I believe. She came out and said that she hasn't been contacted or anything, and that was, like, after the show had started filming. So, yeah. It's an interesting choice. I mean... It, well, it's weird, because it's like, why would you go back and get Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio, but not get the entire cast? It's just a bit of a weird move to me. 
listen, I'm still open to this being a good show and all that. And maybe this character is going to turn into another fan favorite. I'm not a fan of, or I, I've never read any Daredevil comics, so maybe Karen and Foggy aren't necessarily, like, always his best friends in the story. Maybe there are other characters that are worthy of being adapted. I, I don't know. But it's just weird. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, my condolences to this lady who, if she really is straight up just replacing Karen and Foggy, uh, my condolences for you being a woman as well as being a minority. <laughs> yeah, D don't go on social media. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, okay, next story. Uh, it looks like Insomniac is working on a third game alongside Spider-Man and Wolverine. So we'll read this through. That's according to a live stream held by the Full Sail University last September, which is just now being circulated on social media. In the stream, project director Aaron Eberhard claimed that they were helming an unannounced project at the studio. Eberhard previously worked on PlayStation Now at Sony Interactive Entertainment as well as Blizzard's eSports initiative. And this is what she says here. This is actually my first AAA game project now. I'm the first, or I'm the project director here on an unannounced project, Eberhard said on stream. I'm very excited to actually be making the games now. But then, that may sound exciting, but let's read this next sentence here. Eberhard joined Insomniac just before the studio began advertising for a multiplayer project. So, it seems like this is most likely not going to be a single player game and is going to be a multiplayer project. I mean, that just makes me inherently a lot less excited, because I don't want a multiplayer project. But I will say, first of all, I I don't necessarily like the idea of just taking a studio and turning them into a Marvel studio. Unless the developers genuinely just want to make another Marvel game. I mean, that's totally fair and I'm like I at the end of the day I just want developers making games that they're passionate about but if Sony is like going into the part breaking down the doors and being like you guys are making a Howard the Duck game and you have no option you have no choice th that would kind of suck um but and then even going even af above and beyond that I don't want more superhero <laughs> multiplayer games it's just Listen, Avengers didn't work out. Gotham Knights didn't work out. It doesn't. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Doesn't look great. I, it just seems like superhero games thrive in single player, and especially every time they try to do multiplayer games, they don't just commit to it being multiplayer game, which would then just allow me to be like, you know what? It's not for me. They try to have their cake and eat it too, where they're like, oh, it's a multiplayer game. But you can play it by yourself, and then when you play it by yourself, it's clearly a hampered down experience because the game is built around multiplayer. So I don't want more Marvel multiplayer games, so I'm really hoping this isn't Marvel. I'm hoping it is an original IP. But if they are somehow working on a multiplayer game as well as a single player game, and if it is going to be Marvel, listen, at this point in time, the only character that I actively desire to have a game about at the moment is Daredevil, right? Because we've gone in Batman games, we've gone in Superman or Spider-Man games. I kind of just want a Daredevil game right now. That's the character that I'm really want to see. Um, and if they do it, just steal the the combat from Sifu. If you've ever played Sifu, look it up on YouTube. The combat is awesome, and it would be perfect for Daredevil. Um, probably shouldn't make it as hard because that's a really hard game. But man, that would that'd be so good. <laughs> um, but anyways. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, next up, Thomas Hayden Churchman. He's talking, talking about Spider-Man 4, but not Tom Holland with Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire. So this is his quote here. There's always been some kind of, I've heard rumors that Sam Raimi was going to do another Spider-Man movie with Tobey, and if that happens... I would probably campaign to maybe at least do a cameo, you know what I mean? Uh, Church said during an interview with Comic Book. So, basically, people are taking that and they're 
extrapolating a lot of stuff from it that I don't think we really can. It's like, it, to me, it kind of just seems like Thomas Hayden Church being like, hey, you know, I've, uh, I've heard some things and I like working. So if you wanted to give me a job at some point, I mean, that would be nice. I, that, that's basically all I'm hearing. Now, obviously, Thomas Hayden Church is more in the know than most people, right? Like, he's probably friends or has Sam Raimi's contact information. So maybe maybe he has been at a dinner party and maybe he did overhear Sam Raimi talking. But... You know, I can also say that I've heard rumors about Spider-Man 4 because I've been reading articles for it for most of my adult life (laughs) or teenage life and adult life because I haven't had much of an adult life. So, I I mean, yeah, I've heard those rumors, too, (laughs) but I don't know. I just I I can't put too much stock in this. Um, And more than that, I don't know if I want a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 4. It's like, first of all, I don't much like what I was saying about the boys. I don't want the Toby Mag- or I don't want Spider-Man to become oversaturated where it's like we have the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies that are ongoing, we have the Spider-Verse movies that are ongoing, we have the Venom-verse Sony Universe movie that's currently ongoing. Do we really want to add a Toby Maguire Spider-Man 4 to that whole just mess that's currently going on right now? I don't know that I do. And If we were to bring back an older Spider-Man, I feel like there's not really much of a story to tell with Tobey Maguire. Because the way that they left him off in No Way Home is that he's happy and he has a family. It's like, we can't have a happy Spider-Man. So I feel like the the Spider-Man to to do or bring back would be Andrew Garfield. Because his his Spider-Man was left off in a much worse state. So making a movie about him learning how to be happy again, maybe him finding love, maybe him meeting MJ. Um, you know, they were talking about how he was pulling his punches, maybe him becoming a better Spider-Man just in general. That could be a, a good way to take the character. So I, I don't know. I, if you were to bring back an older Spider-Man, I feel like the one you do is Andrew Garfield. But oh, what do I know? I'm an idiot. Uh, okay, next story. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is getting a sequel and a spinoff Paramount Plus series. So uh, we'll we'll read this first paragraph here, I guess. Paramount and Nickelodeon movies are looking to expand the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem universe, according to Variety. The studio has already greenlit a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem sequel and a spinoff Paramount Plus series that will bridge the gap between the films. Point Grey Pictures will produce the film with Jeff Rowe, director and co-writer of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, returning to direct. Um, so, cool. I mean, I... I Again, it's, it's one of those things where I don't want this to turn into, like... Remember when you had, like, the Kung Fu Panda movies? And then you had, like, the, the weird Kung Fu Panda Nickelodeon series that wasn't nearly as good... <laughs> It's like I'm a little scared that that would turn into this um, or that this situation would come out being like that where like the TV show is just really mid. But listen, I'm excited about the mo- about Mutant Mayhem and I would be excited for a sequel and I would be cautious about a show. But if I love Mutant Mayhem as much as I think I will, I'll probably watch it anyways. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll see if these come to fruition. But I, I will note that if mutant mayhem bombs which is not an impossibility because i don't think there's a ton of hype surrounding the movie then we're probably not getting the tv show or the sequel so go watch mutant mayhem for me because i think i'm gonna love it and i would like to see more (laughs) all right next up we have a karate kid sequel uh release date uh, two highly anticipated, two highly anticipated Sony sequels officially have release dates. On Friday, Sony Pictures announced new release dates for the upcoming fourth Bad Boys movie, as well as the new Karate Kid film. The untitled Bad Boys sequel is now scheduled to debut on June 14th, 2024, while Karate Kid will now bow in theaters on December 13th, 2024. Honestly, I don't know that. I don't know if these dates are going to stick because. I don't know for how much longer the actors strike 
by the way, we're going to get to a bunch of release date shifts that have to do with the actors strike as well as the writer strike. I don't, I don't know how, if these are going to get re- resolved soon. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know for how much longer the, the, the strike is going to last. Although to be fair, I do think that the, the actor strike will get resolved before the writer strike simply because actors, they simply have more leverage on the studios. So, so yeah, I mean, I guess if the karate kid script is already written is then maybe it'll make that date. But if this bleeds into next year, I, I don't see, especially that bad, that June bad boys date. There's no way that they can that they can film that and release that in time. Um, so we'll we'll see. But we're let's let's get into some of these release date changes. Um, all right, Venom three. So I don't think it ever had a release date, but we'll read this paragraph here. Sony announced huge changes to their release schedule today, ranging from Crane with the Hunter being delayed a year, and we'll get to that, to Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse being delayed a year, we'll get to that. Uh, these big changes also came with some first-time release date news, including the date for the upcoming Venom 3. The, th- the threequel is currently untitled, but it's heading to theaters next year. According to Sony's latest announcement, the Marvel Comics film will be released on July 20th, 2024. So, yeah, I mean, I again, with the strikes going on, I don't even know if this date is going to stick. I, I assume it's written already, so I guess if the actors um if the actors come to an agreement with the AMPTP, it could happen, but they, I feel like they have they have to start filming this soon uh, if if that's the case. So, we'll see. Um and then yeah, Spider-Man, uh, Sony removed Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse from the release calendar, so I'll read here. The highly anticipated Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse just got hit with a major delay. On Friday, Sony Pictures announced that Beyond the Spider-Verse currently does not have a date on their upcoming release date calendar. The film was previously slotted to debut on March 29th, 2024, a date that, that will now be occupied by the untitled Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel. This wasn't the only change that Sony made to its Sony Spider-Man universe, with Craven the Hunter delayed a full year from October 6th, 2023 to August 30th, 2024. Madam Web moved up from February 16th, 2024 to February 14th, 2024, which is two days, so that one actually doesn't matter. And then we talked about Venom earlier. So Beyond the Spider-Verse didn't even get a new date. It's been indefinitely delayed. Um, that was a weird, just sneaky maneuver from from Sony with Beyond the Spider-Verse because they, they gave us that March date when they hadn't even... They hadn't even started working on the movie. To to my knowledge, I don't know that they've even started like principal production on the on the movie. So for me, it's like you guys obviously were not going to make that date anyways. And with all the information coming out about across the Spider Verse about how you know overworked the animators were and all of that, it's like no, take your time with Beyond the Spider Verse. Treat your animators well. And also, hey, maybe go back to the table and negotiate so that you can pay your writers and your actors. And, hey, animators, VFX artists, this might be a good time for you to unionize as well. So just th- throwing that out there. But, um, yeah, and then the other release date changes. So we talked about Craven the Hunter being delayed a full year. That's wild to me because, from what I understand, that movie is pretty much done. I wonder if Sony's delaying it a full year because it's bad and maybe they want to do, like, reshoots on it? Uh, Maybe? Maybe they're anticipating another Morbius. Maybe they're anticipating this to be another The Flash, you know? One of the movies that are high-profile and that are bombing, that we've seen bombing as of late. I wonder if that's a factor here. So Craven, I I have no faith in that movie. <laughs> um, and then Madam Web is still, I guess, staying where it's at for a February sixteenth uh, slash fourteenth uh, release. So that's that's fine. 
I have no idea what to think of that Madam Web movie. Like, sincerely, have like what what is that movie even going to be there have been so many rumors about them being there being a bunch of spider women in that i don't know if that's true um there's been like rumors that it's going to be like a terminator 2 situation where madam webb like travels back in time to save like a child peter parker from being killed because like and peter parker is going to be like the john connor in the movie i've there have been so many like weird rumors about it that i have no idea what to do so it's like I'm kind of interested just to see what is this movie even going to be. But, um, yeah, we shall see, won't we? All right. Next up, uh, I wanted to just take a look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem Rotten Tomatoes. So, as of recording this video, it is at a 96% with 46 reviews, so... There are st there, there are still more reviews that need to come in for it. Let me actually get a hold on. I should probably get a get a good baseline for what a for what how many reviews a movie should have. Um, so I'm just trying to pick something that's been out for a while. Well, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to find like an Oppenheimer or Barbie. Okay, here we go. Let's look at Barbie. Yeah, so Barbie is at like 398 reviews. So we still have a good a good amount of reviews to come in for TMNT Mutant Mayhem, but it's at a 96% already for like a decent amount of reviews. Like I don't think it'll go down significantly. So I mean, this is very promising. I've I, you know I've talked about a lot about how I'm really looking forward to this movie. I think it looks freaking awesome. So yeah, man, I am all in on this movie. I absolutely cannot wait uh i'll be seeing it on tuesday because they're doing a weird thing i think i think i said this earlier they're like releasing it on a wednesday like that's the official release day but like it's kind of like how movies release on friday but you can watch them on thursday so that's when i'll be watching it all right next up loki season two they released a poster along with the release date so it says t minus one hundred thousand minutes until loki season two it's a bunch of Lokis uh, running around on a Miss Minutes stopwatch. Uh, the poster's f fine, I guess. I honestly don't have too many too many opinions about it. But, um, yeah, it says it's an October 6th release date. I don't remember if this was a... If they had released another release date, if this has been delayed at all. I don't think it has. Um, but, yeah, October 6th. I think October is a good, a good month for Loki. Like, it's not that the show's spooky or anything, but Loki, I think, very much brings, like, a kind of a Halloween-y vibe. So, I am very lukewarm to, on Loki Season 2. I was not a big fan of Loki Season 1. I think it's one of the more mid-Marvel shows where I just thought it was rather uneventful. I, I was kind of bored watching it. Um, and I really didn't like the finale where, like, I, I hate it. They did it with Hawkeye as well. It's like, I hate it when they don't introduce your villain until, like, the last episode. So, uh, like, the villain hasn't been built up at all. Like, he, he has no real arc to him. He's literally just there. Like, Kang the Conqueror was just in Logi so that we could point at the screen and be like, oh, the theories were right. It's him. We were we were right. Look, it's, it's King the Conqueror. Oh, my gosh. And it was like the same with Kingpin and Hawkeye. I don't know. Whatever they end up doing with the season, because I don't even really have any idea of what it's going to be about. Um, I just hope that it's more eventful and that the villain is introduced earlier on in the story. But we shall see. All right. Next story. It looks like Donald Glover is going to be writing the Lando series. So we'll start reading here, I guess. After playing Lando Calrissian in Ron Howard's 2018 movie Solo, A Star Wars Story, Donald Glover is ready to dust off his purple cloak. As Above the Line has exclusively learned that Donald and his brother Stephen Glover are now writing the Lando series that Lucasfilm has been developing for Disney+. The Glover brothers replace Haunted Mansion director Justin Simeon on the project, which was first announced by Lucasfilm boss Kathleen Kennedy back in December 2020 <laughs> Jesus, as part of the Disney Investor Day. 
At the time, there was no word regarding whether Donald Glover or Billy D. Williams would be returning as Lando, though current plans obviously call for Donald's return, and as it's unlikely that he'd write the script for another actor to take on the smooth-talking smuggler. So, yeah. Um, I saw on social media that the Dust- Justin Simeon guy, he like posted on Instagram that this rating this article was how he found out that he was fired off of the show. Um, although I'm sure he got paid, right? Cause he wrote, he wrote a script, he wrote a treatment. So I'm pretty sure he still got paid, but yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, but I, listen, I think that this is probably for the best. I mean, if we look at other Star Wars shows like Obi-Wan and the book of Boba Fett and to a certain extent, Mandalorian season three, it's like uh, Star Wars as of late, hasn't really been killing it, um, on Disney plus. Uh, I mean, we did have Andor, to be fair. Andor was genuinely phenomenal. And uh, my this is my guess. My guess is that Donald Glover is looking at the scene of Star Wars right now and being like, okay, you know what? If I'm going to come back and do this, I don't want to be a Book of Boba Fett. I don't want to be an Obi-Wan. I want to be an Andor. And in order for it to be an Andor, I want to do it myself. And I mean, listen... Donald Glover, he he's written episodes for stuff like Atlanta. Um, I believe other stuff as well. I believe he's written for Community as well. So he's a pretty talented screenwriter. So him coming on and writing it himself, I think is very promising. Um, especially like he obviously knows himself and for him to write dialogue for himself to perform, I think that'll probably work really well. So... Whereas I've been kind of agnostic towards the Lando series, I'm all of a sudden like pretty high on it now. So we'll see. We'll see if this actually comes to fruition because they've announced the Lando series before. Um, all right. So last story of the day. I just wanted to take a look here at the uh, the MCU Rotten Tomatoes rankings. Um, so this is just a ranking of all the MCU Disney Plus shows, uh, as a, according to Rotten Tomatoes, and Secret Invasion is officially at the bottom of the list. But I thought it would be fun to just take a look at the list and let me render my own correct opinions, mind you. So at number one, I wouldn't necessarily have Miss Marvel here, but I'm not mad about it because I really enjoyed Miss Marvel. You know, my big MCU hot take is that. Kam- Amon Vellani as Kamala Khan is the best casting in the MCU since Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I think she's absolutely wonderful. Did the series kind of fall apart in the second half? Yes. It's like I was really invested in her and her friends' stories of like her one of her friends was like running for president of the church or whatever. And then you had his other friend that was like, he was like, oh no, I'm moving. Do I want to move or do I want to stay here with, with Kamala? And I was like super invested in that storyline, and I was even kind of invested in the like the damage control sort of like invading the church or whatever, and whatever social commentary that they were doing there. I was like, I was invested in all of that. And then they just, and then uh, Kamala just like left the country <laughs> and just completely abandoned that storyline to go to. Oh gosh, am I? I don't want to. I don't want to be racist. Did she went to Pakistan, right? Right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not racist, am I? Oh, no. But that's, I'm just going to leave that. <laughs> um, and she, whatever. She leaves the country. They just completely abandon those storylines. Like, they don't even get resolved. Um, and then, yeah. And then she, then she comes back in the final episode. So, I wouldn't have it at number one. But I'm not mad at it. Okay. And then you have stuff with something like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, which isn't technically an MCU Disney Plus show, but whatever. That's number two. That's at a 95%. I I thought people hated this show. <laughs> How is this show at a 95%? I don't know. I always thought that people hated the show and that, like, the... And then, like, you know, it, 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 it has, like, a hardcore fan base that nowadays you'll see them pop up out of the surface and be like... Be like, guys, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a good, actually, and I actually think that they should bring Chloe Bennett into the MCU. It would be really cool if they did that, and, like, they've been trying to, like, they've been trying to, like, force Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on us, but it's at a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, Loki, 
I would not have it this high. I mean, I don't think it's particularly good, but whatever. Um, I, I explained that before. Daredevil, totally cool with it being number four. Although, to be honest, absolutely should be number one. <laughs> um, yeah, Daredevil's amazing, obviously. Hawkeye, way too high on this list. Hawkeye was very mid, <laughs> but whatever, uh, I guess. Um, WandaVision, yeah, should it should be higher, but uh, WandaVision's great. Uh, Legion, I've heard Legion is very good. Um, I, I watched like a f couple episodes when I was like 13 or 14, and I don't think I really liked it that much, but I feel like now, as a wise man, I'd probably enjoy it more. <laughs> probably not too wise, though, if I'm being honest. Luke Cage, yeah, it's probably that's a, a mid-tier show. Cloak and Dagger, never watched it. Moon Knight, not particularly good. Should probably be lower, if I'm being completely honest. Um, Agent Carter, yeah, the show is pretty mid, I feel like, so I'm fine with it being wherever, honestly. Modoc, I couldn't finish Modoc. I thought it was kind of bad. Marvel's Runaways, this show is not very good. It should have been near lower, honestly. Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I feel like this should be way higher. I love Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think it's one of the better Disney Plus shows. I definitely think it's underrated. Um, yeah, I, th I feel like Falcon and the Winter Soldier is genuinely great, but whatever screw me am i right uh jessica jones jessica jones is, is honestly i think a bit underrated because the second season is pretty bad but the first and the third seasons they're pretty solid honestly so i, I feel like overall jessica jones is like a solid show um then we get the gifted which is whatever i've never seen that the defenders i like the defenders i think it's fun um it's like it's nowhere near as good as daredevil but to me it to me, this landed the right tone of it just being a fun show. Like, it's nowhere near as compelling as Daredevil or Jessica Jones. Um, but it's better at just being a fun show than Luke Cage or Iron Fist is. So, I I, I think this is better than Luke Cage. Um, She-Hulk Attorney at Law. I had fun with She-Hulk, but I'm, I'm not going to get mad at, P at anybody that dislikes it. Because I totally get it. Um, then you have The Punisher at number 20, so... I mean, sure, why not? I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't really feel that passionately about the Punisher show, to be honest. I thought it was kind of mid. Um, and then you have Secret Invasion, fifty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes at twenty one. Um, the only proper like, because okay, so apparently there was a Blade series. <laughs> I've never even heard of this. Then you have this random show called Powers. I have no idea what that is. So the only like actual Marvel shows that secret invasion is above is iron fist and inhumans which yeah i think that <laughs> i think that secret invasion is better than those shows so i guess i'm not mad at it but jesus and it is by far and it is the lowest um lowest ranked uh mcu prop like at made by marvel studios disney plus series that's crazy I feel like Secret Invasion is being a little overhated right now. Like, I like the show. Straight up. I think it's a solid show. Um, like, I think that... I, I think it it never becomes, like, great, to, to be fair. So that's why, like, I'm not, not going to, like, hardcore defend it. But I feel like it's definitely better than, like, She-Hulk and... Uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's better than Moon Knight. You know, I think it's better than Hawkeye. I think it's better than Loki. So I don't know. I'm I'm a little surprised by this because it's like it was fine throughout. Like I t I totally get that people are making fun of the the whole like scroll fight in the end of the last episode, but it's not like bad <laughs> aside from that. Um, so I don't know, but that's just me and my uh, correct opinion, objectively so. So. That's going to be it for this episode of Nerdy Movie News Roundup. Let me know what you thought about any and all of these topics in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.